Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Maayong buntag tanatong tanan. I am Dave Marshall. I am the director for the office of Siliman Online University. I will be your moderator for this third session of our webinar on misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Dr. Betty Sernol Macan, our president, advised. Siliman University community and the whole community to uphold the truth and avoid participating in political campaigns that seek to win voters through fraud, especially the deliberate spreading of disinformation or misinformation. Dr. Makan challenged everyone that to those who have access to social media, she said, let us use this expertise to challenge this information and where necessary work together to take down websites deliberately engage in it friends today is our third day of our webinar it is part of the dr mariano lau lecture series on misinformation disinformation and malinformation last april 2 we discussed or we got, we got basic understanding of what is misinformation versus disinformation. Our very own OIP director has shared to us the different principles when we talk about media and information literacy. Last April 9, Dr. Joan Serrano from the University of the Philippines Open University shared with us the different fact-checking techniques in social media. She was able to present to us the realities of the infodemic that we are experiencing in the country right now. Today, 
let's jump to a more complicated topic on misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. I am happy uh, to have this morning. Our speaker for this morning is the lead faculty for technology and innovation at the Waiseli Academ uh, Academy of Fulbright University, Vietnam. Dr. Vladimir Mariano graduated with a PhD in computer science and engineering at Pennsylvania State University uh, with research interest in machine learning and computer vision. He has worked on industrial projects with the National Robotics Engineering Center of uh, Carnegie Mellon University and Video Mining Corporation in Pennsylvania, USA. He published three U.S. patents with video mining. As an academic, Dr. Vlad has served as director and associate professor of the Institute of Computer Science at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. In Vietnam, Dr. Vlad served as lecturer and research coordinator of the School of Science and Technology at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. During his time in academia, Dr. Vlad also co-founded and served as chief technology officer for several technology startup companies. These startups delivered various services, including drone-based aerial survey, video analysis of retail stores, and mobile app development for human resource services. On the side, Vlad teaches kids coding, assembling electronics, and making robots. He enjoys traveling, artwork, and playing the piano. Friends in the academe, students, teachers, um, I am very um, honored and very proud to uh, present to you our speaker for this morning, uh, Dr. Vladimir Vlad Mariano. Sir Vlad, the screen is yours. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, and I'm throwing in two questions for your uh, so basically, th salamat Dave for na mayong buntag sa, sa inyong tanan. <laughs> and Sing Chao from Vietnam. I'm here in Vietnam. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I remember the Siliman University campus, a beautiful campus where you can just walk to the city. Uh, sa, oh, haya, hay ka dun sa ano. <laughs> Club ko nga in Kamay Sans River. <laughs> and yeah, I'm a good friend of uh, Dave, of uh, Chuchi of Janice and Tito Ben Malayan. So thank you, Dave. So yeah, I, I really appreciate what uh, what uh, Dave said, uh, like the, the, that it is important for the young people that you as leaders have to seek the truth, the truth and factual information. Uh, because if you, you are going to make decisions for yourself and for other people and you have to base that on the truth on what is true and what is factual so today i'm going to i threw in two questions here okay that uh, think about it as we go on with the talk uh, first question is what is the biggest threat of deep fakes to society okay what is the, there are many, you can think about the threats. Because when you, when you hear the word deep fake, yung word na fake, it connotes a negative, a negative, uh, negative effect. Okay. So it is, a, it is perceived as a threat and it is a threat. Number two, uh, what are the benefits of deep fake technology? There are benefits as well. And um, this can be useful for you. Okay. So as we as a, as in technology, every technology is a is a double-edged sword. It can be used for good. It can be used for 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 ill. So I hope you will use it for good. Please, <laughs> please do. 
uh, in the in the there is now a big industry of misinformation and uh, disinformation. Hindi siya sinasadya ng just a small group of persons. It is a big industry all over the world, and it's it's uh, it's it's trying to control people's opinion regarding elections, uh, Brexit, uh, vaccines, okay, every important thing in society. And here we are there's now an emerging threat called deep fake. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share many uh, many links with you. Okay. Okay, sino to? Kamukha siya ni Moira. <laughs> okay, this person is computer generated. Okay. Uh, this is a very interesting website called This Person Does Not Exist. Okay, so let me put that in the chat. Okay. You can play, it's nice to play with this uh, tool because you can see that if you look at one person, it looks like there, this person is real. This person has a life. Meron siyang mga, meron siyang boyfriend, meron siyang mga, you, you can build an entire story just, just looking at this picture. And the fact that she's smiling, you, you can, it, it, it invokes a lot of emotion. Okay? Tapos mukhang mayaman siya kasi meron siyang mahabang ano, <laughs> hikaw. <laughs> Ang ganda yung kilay niya. So there's a lot of, there's, you can, ano, a, a picture tells a thousand words. But this, this particular image is completely artificial. It is synthetic. Okay? And I think this came out uh, um, just in the last couple of years, you can generate a new image just by clicking on the button. Okay, so this is an American. Very rare na merong ano. Ayan, pwede yung bata. Okay. So all of these are completely generate, uh, completely artificial, okay? You can use this, I'm sure, in the world. Among seven billion people, there are there's a person who looks exactly like this. <laughs> Pero the fact that you can generate it, and then if you don't like it, you can make another person. Okay, and then you can meme this person. You can. So this is uh, no as as we as we say, <laughs> this is just the start, the start of something that is emerging, that you have. Uh, you have media that is totally indistinguishable from the real thing. Okay, I've been my you know, as as they would know, m my field is uh, image processing, computer vision. So I do a lot of uh, manipulation of images. So I teach in UP Los Banos. I teach for ten years. Uh, students how to manipulate images, how to extract useful information from that, and how to generate new images. But this is, but when I look at this technology, deep fake, okay, it is on a new level, okay? And every year it's getting better. Must fake pa siya every year. <laughs> so it will come to a point where you cannot distinguish anymore what is real and what is not, okay? Um, we will get to that later. But I'd like you to play with that tool. That's a nice tool to have. Uh, this person does not exist. Nakita mo na to Dave before? Yeah. Yes. Yes, Vlad. Okay. So yeah, Sometimes we can... Sam, yeah. Some uh, use this for for profile pic. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and pic. like an avatar also. Uh, especially if uh, we send something like data and we need like to put like a profile pic but uh because one of the anonymization technique na instead na real photo ang ilagay dito na lang kumuha hmm. okay that's good 
So you can you can create any number of images you want. Okay. So I am organizing a I I have a organized a, a seminar a two week seminar here in in Fulbright University Vietnam. It's called the digitization of trust. Okay. So um, in artificial intelligence, it it is it's like a it's like a tool that creates that uh, the the question now is can we trust these technologies? One of the one of the big um, one of the big uh, topics here is the rise of synthetic and manipulated media. Okay, so there are two things there. For deep fake technology one is synthetic data the one that i showed you before and the one another one is manipulated data it means that there is an existing real data but you manipulate it in some way using deep fake technology okay. the other topics in the seminar is blockchain which tries to automate trust okay between two parties on the internet and blockchain is the foundational technology for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And also the bias of AI, okay? So AI has bias. It means that it is just like a person, it is biased according to some, I know, it's, it is like a spirit. <laughs> nah. Uh, it's working in the background and it is you know, biased according to the person who created it and how it is influencing our decision making. Okay. So one big, uh, one big topic here is deep fake. Okay. So let me show you um, something last year, just in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of, um, of headline grabbing uh, news. Okay, one example here is a uh, deep fake Tom Cruise. Okay, it's so it looks very real. Okay, and um, and it's very common now on uh, on social platforms like uh, Instagram and TikTok. Um, I'm sure TikTok is trying to trying to control this the use of fake. But what can you do? It's like a it's like a cat and mouse game. If you remember in the early days of email, that's like uh, twenty to like twenty five, twenty seven years ago. In the early days of email, there was a cat and mouse game between those who are making spam and those who are who are detecting spam, so that <clears throat> they will block the spam. The spam filter will block the spam email before it reaches your inbox. So the same uh, thing is happening now. You have fake, you have fake media generators coming in, giving fake images, and then you have another army of algorithms who are trying to detect, who are trying to detect or classify the image, whether it is fake or not. Okay, it's a cat and mouse game. And because of this, because of this uh, conflict, unfortunately, the deep fake generators are getting better and better. Hindi lang every year, eh? means an every month, there's some new research going on to make the fake even faker. <laughs> okay, so I will share itong sa Waisili. And I'm going to share also itong kay Tom Cruise. Okay. In San ni Juan de la Cruz. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is a... And deepfake has been, has been extensively used in movies. If you have watched the movie uh, Benjamin Button, you have there the actor Brad Pitt who... Uh, we can... Put here, Benjamin Button. Okay, so this is something that you can watch. So this is a 2008 movie starring Brad Pitt. So this is an excellent, uh, 
an excellent uh, demonstration of deep fake. Um, it's it's a manipulation. They try to to make Brad Pitt's face uh, younger and even older using using uh, uh, deep fake technology. Pero ano eh, it's a it's a very difficult. The, the technology they use is a uh, is nothing compared to what we have right now. Okay, and there's also another movie, the last, the the last appearance of you know, the Fast and the Furious. Iba namatay si ano, yung actor, and so they have to create a, a defect image of that actor and put it on the last uh, movie on Fast and Furious, and. <clears throat> There is a, just like any media technology, um, porn is a, is a, is a, is using deep fake, okay? Any media technology, usually the first, one of the first uh, uh, adapters of media technology is uh, porn and the uh, Department of Defense, okay? So ito, this is a, a very sad story about a woman who found her picture, who found herself in porn. And it turns out that they took her face and they put her face on some, uh, on some videos and some images. And then they, they completely ruined her reputation. Okay. So I'm going to put that link over here on the chat okay. so this is on is abuse and the tools to make this is is out there if you have a sufficient uh, programming background then the, the code for doing this is already out there and every year it gets easier to use okay so it is important for those who are making technology for programmers it uh, you have to you have to be ethical. You have to. It's not. It's not a matter of what you can do. It's a matter of whether you should do it or not. Okay. If you are an app developer, you should not collect too much information. That is, hindi malalaman ng ng user yon. Pero you should not do that. If you have access to this kind of technology, it is your duty to protect society. Or your organization against the 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 ills, okay, or the the negative side of this technology. Hindi ikaw yung nagpopromote pa, okay. So you should, and it you have to be proactive. So <clears throat> this is a sometimes they use a deep fake porn for uh, revenge. Sometimes katuwa uh, lang, and um, it's a it's it's a very sad story. Though you have to, you can take a look at the you can take a look at the article and see how this life was uh, no, destroyed to to deep fake technology. Okay. And uh, um, how about this? This is a very nice story coming from two years ago. An Indian politician is using deep fake technology to win new voters. Okay. So uh, the, 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 the story here is that in India, there are many regions, there are many tribes, and they speak different languages. So, and this Indian politician wants to reach uh, a region that speaks a different language than he is. He does not know their language, but he wants to win the voters there. So what they did is they made a deep fake video of him campaigning in the language of that region. Okay. So you have to think, is this tama ba ito? 
Okay. <laughs> si Dave gawa ganun si Dave. <laughs> Pero, I think uh, it, it could be mixed. Okay? Kasi ginagamit niya yun just like any technology. You want to reach um, some voters, right? If you're a presidential candidate, then you want and you speak uh, Ilocano. You don't speak Bisaya. And then you create a deepfake technology where suddenly you can now speak Bisaya, complete with ano, with your lip mo- lip movement synchronized. Is that is that ano? Is that acceptable? Is that ethical? Ano, Dave? What do you think? Opinion lang. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ethics naman kasi, there are two phases of ethics. Eh. Uh, it depends on the nature and the reason of doing it. If the nature and purpose of doing it is to is for the good of both sides, I think it is acceptable. But if the nature is to to spread a positive on one side, but will deteriorate or provide negative to the other side, and Definitely, it's not ethical. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there will be uh, there will be people who will differ from your opinion. Abi nila fake yan eh, fake yan. Hindi yan totoo. So hindi dapat yan ipakita sa mga tao. <laughs> so there will be a there will be another camp who will say that. And so it means that it's now a gray area. Okay. There will be people will saying this is beneficial, and then this is you should not do that. Pero the gray area, it it keeps expanding. So hindi na natin mahirap yun eh kung hindi mo na alam kung ano yung tama at kung ano yung maling gamit ng isang technology. So I think I think ano one one thing for the audience is you can start a discussion among your students or among your colleagues. About this, because it's going to get worse. Ngayon palang pag-usapan na natin kung ano yung ano yung tamat maling gamit nitong technology nato. And there are there's there's there are definitely some benefits. Okay, some would argue that this is beneficial. You want to reach new voters. You want to communicate there. Wag ka na lang gumamit ng translator. Magdeep fake ka na lang. Matipid. <laughs> And uh. I think in the future, this is going to this can happen in real time. Okay, I can switch, turn on a button, and suddenly I will be talking in Bisaya. And um, it's already it's already happening in some apps in the cell phone. So now we are we have now to we have now to discuss whether we should allow these technologies to to go into this. Okay. okay. <clears throat> The war between Russia and Ukraine. They are now using deepfake in the information war. Okay. So I'm going to put the. Okay. So this is an article on. We 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 know that there's a war going on in in between Russia and Ukraine, and it's not just about about bullets and guns and tanks and missiles. There's now a big disinformation campaign okay. so inside of russia they are they are the the russian government is trying to 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 another propaganda to to mostly misinform their you know their their uh, citizens even through the fakes fake videos of ukrainian president Uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. Okay, bakit man nandun yung pangalan ko? <laughs> But there's a so there are two sides here. There are now deep fakes of Putin, and then there are deep fakes of Zelensky. Okay, so now they're you're they're the governments are trying to win the hearts of people. Okay, and They're using everything like television, the internet, how to win people, not just in Russia and in Ukraine, but around the world. Okay, people's perception of the war is this justified, or is 
President Zelensky actually uh, surrendering. Merong ane, there is a video of Zelensky, a video of Zelensky telling his soldiers to lay down their arms and surrender to the Russians. That is fake. Okay, but you can see that there is a there's now this power of such technology, such information technology, to perhaps convince even a few soldiers. Okay? A few soldiers or me, even a lot of soldiers to lay down their arms and that would be catastrophic for the defense of ukraine so you can see here and <clears throat> one thing we will often say here is this is just the beginning of the use of this technology in the future they are going to use this for all kinds of things so for uh, leaders talking to their people. So I'm going to answer the first question. What is the biggest threat? <clears throat> okay, what is the biggest threat? What do you think of the fake to society? Okay, there is, a, there is a story. I don't know if you know the story. The boy who cried wolf. Okay. This is uh, <clears throat> from Aesop's Fables. So, here, ano, siya yung lookout kung may wolf na dadating sa, sa town. And sometimes he would say, wolf, wolf, wala namang wolf. So, eventually, yung mga tao, hindi na naniniwala sa kanya. They're, they don't believe him anymore. So, one one day, the wolf actually came and he said wolf there's a wolf there's a wolf and the people did not believe him and so the wolf came and they destroyed the property and they attacked the people so i believe this is a, going to be the biggest threat of the fake that people will not believe the real thing anymore if i capture an image if i capture an image and I post it on social media, people will not believe that it's real, okay? Then if what is on your screen is not, if you don't believe what is on your screen, what do you believe anymore? <laughs> okay, face to face na lang, okay? Even a few years from now, I don't know if Dave's face will actually be real. Totoo ka ba, Dave? Can I touch your face? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> because you can uh, and if you're going to decide if you're going to make a decision as a leader of your organization how can you base your decision on facts and truth if you don't know what to believe <clears throat> so you have to discuss that <laughs> as an organization as a so there is a there's another uh, article here called the biggest threat of deepfakes is not the fake themselves. It's actually us not believing the real thing when it's presented in front of us. So I'm going to I'm going to paste this uh, link. So hindi ka na maniwala pag ano when you're when you're shown the real thing. Uh, there was a time many years ago that uh, actually not many years ago, pamatanda na tayo dito na pag sinabi ko yun. <laughs> so it's a uh, um, yung CCTV CCTV video and even digital images can be used in court as evidence in court. Diba? Merong, ayun, no? may, may, may ebidensya, may picture. Kinuhanan ko kanina. Tapos meron pang CCTV. Diba? Kita, kita ko yung, ano, kita ko nangyari yung crime. Pero now, do you think the court will accept uh, digital images, digital video? I don't know, is there a lawyer here somewhere <laughs> who can answer that? So it becomes, ano, as, as the real thing becomes more and more like the deep fake, 
it's now questionable whether you can accept that as proof, as evidence of an event or an or or, or no or something that happened. Okay, so we have the Indian politician. We have the war in Ukraine. Okay, so in our in our seminar, we have uh, no, we have a speaker named uh, Stamatis Karnuskos. Okay. okay, so. Dr. Stamatis is a technical of is a technology foresight. Okay, you know, title ng job niya. He actually looks into the future. Given a particular technology, he looks into the future and what is this future? What is this technology? How is this technology going to affect your organization, your people, and your you know, the people around you? or you know, even industries. So I'm going to put him here. And the reason I invited him as a speaker is because of an article that he wrote. Okay. This is in the IEEE Transactions on Technology and Society. This is a relatively new journal. Uh, Dave, well, you can share this with your you know, with the IT and computer science students. Um, and you can download the PDF. And this is not this is not hard to this is not hard to read. Actually it the journal is written in a way that it is readable by by uh, many people. Okay. So an assessment name, Dr. Stamatis, is that we are now in the era of deep fakes and society is not ready. It is not ready to for this future that is already here. <laughs> okay. Yung, ano, the idea of fake media, it's not, it's not new. Eh. Ever since the ancient Egyptians, they were already selling art that is fake. Okay, in order to they copy the real thing and then they 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 sell it <laughs> in fake and then they get money. Okay. For thousands of years, fake fake art has been there, fake information. But now with AI, it's it gets so much easier to make them. Okay. And the way that we propagate information, it means that you, you put out some information out there and immediately a thousand people can, can see it without, without somebody filtering it. Na, na, na accelerate nung, ano, nung AI yung, ano, yung, yung propagation ng fake. Dati kasi, mahirap, di ba? Gagawa ka ng fake art. Talagang you have to be really, you know, uh, uh, very detailed in making the fake, make it believable, and then you sell it. Okay, but now you have automated algorithms that can do that. Okay, and in computer science, those techniques are called generative adversarial networks or GANs. And um, and if you look at generative adversarial networks is just an invention of a computer scientist who knows what what new methods will be will be uh, invented in the next few years by some hotshot university or group of people so these uh, these algorithms are evolving and with the scale of the internet uh, it's now very easy to propagate this information whether it's true or not so this is the conclusion of Dr. Stamatis, that society is not ready. Okay, so you have, you have, uh, well, just um, one sentence here. The article investigates the deep fakes via multi-tangled perspectives that includes media and society, 
media production, media representation, media audiences, gender, law, regulation, as well as politics. So this is a, this is a good read so that you have a comprehensive uh, analysis of how this technology is going to impact society. And because uh, it's cute, cute, ano, eh? cute and deepfake, di ba? Ay, fake, ang galing. Fake na, ano. Pero think deeper. We have to think deeper. You have, kasi ngayon, the young people are, mababaw na sila eh. Like Instagram, TikTok, napakababaw. Okay? You have to think deeper because this is your future. And this is going to affect you not in the next decade, in the next few years. Okay. So I put the link there so you can take a look. And if you are a researcher, or even if you're not a researcher, there's a nice uh, YouTube channel. You can take a look to see the state of the art in the research of the fakes. And this is uh, what they call two minute papers. Okay. Uh, this, uh, the author of this YouTube channel is, uh, I cannot pronounce his name, uh, Dr. Karoy Feher. <laughs> so, and yes, in this YouTube channel, there are 1.21 million subscribers. And it really shows you the state of the art okay, of, uh, of, computer graphics of making real things and this is the type of technology that you will soon see in many of the image manipulation uh, products okay? whether it's adobe photoshop or in um, adobe premiere okay so if i'll put the link here and Actually, as a researcher, I don't have a lot of time in, you know, in reading papers anymore. But I, I look at the state of the art in this, uh, in this YouTube channel and to see how good these new algorithms are. And what the nice thing about uh, this uh, YouTube channel is that they follow a certain technology that every few months there's an update and it keeps getting better, it keeps getting better. And those imperfections of the previous algorithm becomes solved by the time of the next paper, which came out a few months later. Okay. And here you will get a sense of how fast technology is, uh, is uh, progressing, how, how, ano, how fake things become more fake <laughs> after just a few months. Okay. And it's not just defect technology, it's also manipulation, okay? manipulation of, uh, of images. So it, this, this channel is very rich. It shows you um, the state of the art. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's really up to you to, as a, if you're a researcher, to, to compare, to see what is uh, um, how things are progressing okay what are the problems in the previous paper that becomes addressed in the next paper and so it becomes more and more realistic okay. so if just watching the videos is a uh, very entertaining okay there's also there's also, uh, I think this is an online magazine, uh, IEEE Spectrum, that talks about the fakes. Okay. So I will put it here, and this could be useful also for engineers to look at the state of the art on the fakes. Okay. These are not these are not hard to to <clears throat> to digest, but uh, it gives you some. You know, some of the research-based uh, progress in, in this area. Kasi mahirap kung opinion lang eh. <clears throat> Yung opinion lang natin, oh, grabe, grabe, grabe. 
Oh, yung ganda, ang cute. Pero if if it's if it is based on the researcher's take, it becomes more comprehensive. It's based on on uh, on uh, research, and it shows you it it shows you what kind of future are we headed to. Okay, I think that's more important. If you are a leader, at least try to imagine what the future will be, okay? And for us, we are, Kamini Dave, we are forced to do that because we have children, okay? We try to imagine a better world for them or when there's a new technology, how are, how are they going to parent their kids, okay? How are they going to consume media, diba? Diba, Dave? Pag may anak ka na. You, you think of the future, okay? You think of what is going to happen. And you want to, to have your kids or even the young people around you to be grounded on, the, on seeking the truth, seeking the facts, and then to be God-fearing. Kasi pag wala ka ng Diyos, <laughs> kahit ano lang pwede mong gawin, di ba? Pero if you know that you're accountable to an all-powerful God, to your Father in heaven, then you know that you know, you know that uh, he is protecting you and you are also accountable to to him okay and then i shared already the the boy who cried wolf um this what is the big this threat of the fake is that we, we stop believing real things are real Okay. So, Sana, Sana, you will read all these links that I shared, and it will it it ano uh, kasi forty minutes lang yung sa akin. It's it's really not enough time to discuss this, but I want you to bring home those articles and then to discuss it with your students, and you uh, know to ask them what future do you do you envision for yourself okay is uh how would you react if you don't know if this is real or not okay there is a bigger uh there's another website okay so deep just for some deep fake lang there's there are more technologies out there that are impacting society so i would I would recommend that you also visit this uh, website so that you can see all these new technologies coming out and how it is impacting society. I think that is the bigger, ano, the bigger. See, go to Dave. We can have ano, uh, an online, I don't know, webinar on ano, regular webinar on technology and society. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that, could a good be, idea. that could be a good, uh, a good idea. Okay, so with this, with this final presentation, and I also want to promote the Waisili Academy. Um, this coming September, we have an entrepreneurship seminar where the, the fellows will be flown over here to Ho Chi Minh City, fully funded okay, for a two-week seminar. So we can apply that uh, soon. Okay. So with that, um, that is a conclusion that we have to be aware of what this technology is going to, what are the dangers of technology at the same time, what is the benefits? Okay. Isa pang benefit ng technology, hindi naman siya fully masama. Uh, is that you can create media without paying royalty. Okay. It means that uh, this also applies with computer-generated music, that you don't have to pay a royalty to use that media. And in machine learning, it is also synthetic data is also useful. Okay. Pero it's a good discussion for you and your school on how to best use this but how to mitigate the risks. Okay, with that, um, welcome to answer any question.
Okay. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, it's it's really a yeah. reflection to move forward, and the presentation of uh, Dr. Mariana is basically uh, giving us giving us an idea, an awareness, and a basic understanding what uh, deep fake technology is all about. Um, this is a new technology, actually, and uh, I think uh, many of us uh, saw a news on social media, which is also trending and rolling around on social media. A certain politician denied denied an accusation that he was the one talking over the phone, and uh, his argument is it's a deep audio, a deep fake audio was embedded into that conversation. So things like those. However, um, uh, Dr. Vlad also uh, emphasized that it's it's a little bit scary, but for sure, like Vlad and I are in the field of computer science, we know that uh, this technology was created and developed for basically for for the main or for the good, right? But uh, it's just uh, being abused and anchoring on the statement of blood, blood that it's not anymore on what you can do, but more on what you should do and what you should not do. It's more of our, our social consciousness, our ethical considerations, our ethical... Uh, behavior and at the same time maintaining to be a good citizen i think those are the most powerful tool <laughs> and the most powerful uh ways to combat and to counteract those deep fake technology kasi nga sabi nga ni speaker natin ang hirap na talagang mag-identify there's a cat and mouse type of uh game here where the deep fake producers and then for sure the advocates or the against of deep fake uh, producer will also develop their own technology pero sa Pilipinas siguro hindi pa ganun yung awareness yung participation and involvement into that kind of uh, action so i think dave um, I mean, yes we can, we can also put there some after after all the discussions Ano yung, what are the good policies that should be placed in order to protect the citizens against misinformation and deep fakes? Okay. Halimbawa, mahuli, mahuli kita na merong kang na nagpost na ng fake. Dapat patusahan ka, di ba? <laughs> Kasi, <laughs> or, or things like that. There should be some yeah. policies on, on this. Yeah, tama. In fact, that's one of my notes here. Uh, still anchoring on your statement that it's not anymore about. I mean, from the from the site that you shared, it's a little bit scary because bakada thing yung point na we're not anymore believing uh, for the real. Kasi gusto natin bakad dumating yung panahon na palagi nating sinasabi. O tika lang muna ha, idadaan ko muna ito sa deep fake generator or deep fake a scanner kung talagang totoo ka or hindi things like that no and yeah. uh and, and, and even even dave ano eh, you can imagine kanina yung that that the person does not exist it is a photorealistic image later they're going to animate that so that it can actually talk okay they can animate it can can move around and then yeah. they can talk and then using a chatbot to generate the, the audio so it can be a real conversational person and uh, I think you know you need prediction in the next couple of years siguro. Pero, so how do we prepare for that pag usapan na natin <laughs> ngayon pa lang uh, I before pa dumating I I'm I'm even thinking being one of those uh, writers for the syllabus of Media and Information Literacy at Siliman in our K-12. I'm not sure if we included the fake technology in in that uh, curriculum, in that syllabus. I think it is very high time to strengthen. For sure, there are topics about social media use, but maybe it's high time to, to strengthen it, uh, improve it. 
uh, incorporating the sophistication of technology and how technology can bring this new technologies into a different phase. Kasi nga sabi ng speaker natin, yung faking naman, the act of faking is not new, right? Tagal na ito eh. It's just really a matter of sophistication and the complexity because of the power of information technology. And I, I, I should agree also with our speaker that sana the legal perspective will consider sana maraming mm. maraming legislators natin to look at how the social media transform information pero ang problema what if si si ano mismo ang producer or peddler ng mga fake news yun ang problema di ba <laughs> oh, oh. yun ang problema so if you have questions to our audience, if you have questions, uh, please uh, feel free to type them on the chat box. You can you can send your question to everyone or you can send it privately. Maybe our teachers are here. Some of the teachers actually, our participants, Dr. Mariano is uh, actually all over the Philippines. We have from Bohol, from Holy Name University, I saw also from Dipolog, I saw from Tugegarao, we have from Batangas, and uh, mixed talaga siya. Some also are librarians. No? I'm happy that the librarians are, are here and future librarians, considering that they are repository of information. Napa, napaisip tuloy ako, Dr. Vlad, pa, ano na yung role ng mga librarians in being a repository of information. Baka the, the police, the Bachelor of Library and Information Science should also augment their understanding on information science because of this kind of technology. Oh, ngayon, you can, you can, you can now have a, an algorithm generate the full text of a novel, novel in just a few seconds. Tapos, lagyan mo pa ng fake na pictures. And there's a there's a, an interesting tool that came out in the news called DALI. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me find that out. It's uh, basically you, you just type in the text, parang Google, and then it will, it will generate an image of what you what you created of what you said so it yeah let me Kasi, share that uh years ago merong lumabas na research article generator right like in just one click you can create a research article ngayon iba na talagang nag level up talagang image audio image Saka, ano eh, yung, even in the in, in the United States, most of the sports articles are written by algorithms. Hindi na tao. Okay? It is, it is ano na, ginagamit na siya. Kasi ang sports medyo structured siya. And um, sometimes they have uh, this, this, this exercise where they have an article written by a person, an article written by an algorithm, and then they try to answer which one is which, which one was written by a person. And it's getting harder to, to do that. Um, I don't know if there's a Filipino, a Filipino tool for actually doing that. Pero maganda, magandang ano eh, it's a good problem to, for your computer science students to, to learn about. But how, yeah. how do they actually do it? And not not for no, hindi para gumawa rin ng fake, but to really understand how they they do it and how to to mitigate the risk. That that's really true. That the computer science perspective, it's really a good research problem uh, to start, and and maybe maybe also being an ordinary citizen like. An ordinary consumer of information on SOCMED, on social media. I think what we can do is uh, maybe at least, at least man lang, we're not a spreader of um, 
unverifiable or unverified uh, content on social media. I think that's the most powerful way also to fight because sabi nga ng speaker natin, it's so difficult na to identify which of those content are real, especially pag video, di ba? You just mm-hmm. imagine the Tom Cruise video talking. You just imagine if a certain politician going to going to the community, doing community service, paano kung deepfake yun? Paano kung deepfake technology, <laughs> deepfake video yung yung pinalabas na ganun, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, ang hirap kasi at, Uh, Dr. Vlad, may mga technology na ba na magbasa if that content is a fake or not? Uh, that's a good ano, that's a good research problem. Maganda nga if you can have a website, you submit a link there. Yes. And then it will tell you how much of it is fake and how much yeah. is not. Uh, yeah. Siguro, siguro. Or you can submit an image if mm. it is fake or not. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not I don't know if there are websites like that, pero baka meron na. Pero it's a good it's a good research problem, and yeah. maybe you can also tailor that for the Philippines. Like yes, yeah. If ano, if Philippine content, and yeah. then share if this is ano, this is fake or not. Yeah. Uh, yun nga, tamas Dave. Uh, do not spread information that is not verified. Check your sources. Uh, Yes. I don't okay. know. Hindi ko, ko alam, Dave, ang, ano, ang future nito. Pero uh, it's, it's good to talk about it among the young people. Yeah. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, hearing from an expert, I know Dr. Vlad Mariano. He is really into image processing. And hearing, hearing from him saying... I don't know what's the future of this. It's it's really scary. Expert na itong nagsasabi kasi. And it's really scary uh, hearing this from an expert what this kind of technology would or how this technology can impact uh, to our learners, to ordinary citizens. Kasi after all, Uh, ang victim talaga dito are those ordinary citizens. At tayo pa naman sa Pilipinas, we are we are one of those top users of social media and most of our information now are taken from or sourced from the social media. We have one question here from uh, I think this is from Holy Name University, uh, Dr. Ligason. What are the measures to prevent abuse? of the said technology, would this imply the paid trolls and fake news peddlers will as well go high-tech in their unethical endeavor? Okay, the second question, they are already going high-tech. Okay. Ang, ano, the trolls, fake news, and misinformation is an industry. It is para siyang, ano, eh, para siyang call center na. Uh, you have employees, you have uh, salaries, HR. It's a company. It's a, it's a group of companies. They're already there. And they just get paid to do their trolls, fake news. Kung ikaw ay creative, okay, pwede kang mag-apply doon. Hindi, wag ka mag-apply doon. Pero it's already happening, okay? And they are the they are exploring. Meron din silang research. They are already they are also doing their R and D. They are trying different technologies. They are following the latest technologies on how to best create uh, fake uh, media and how to best uh, propagate them. So yeah, it's a it's a big industry. Number first question: What are the measures to prevent abuse of said technology? Um, you need policies. You need uh, first. You need to police yourself, and you need some strong policies that will punish people for spreading uh, fake, fake, uh, fake media. And mahirap yon. <clears throat> mahirap ang It's getting faker and faker every year. So, mahirap a prosecute, but at least you have to try. Okay? And you have to discuss this with your, you know, with with the with the politicians, 
with the with the students kailangan merong discourse na in philippine in the at least in the philippine context of um, this technology thank you thank you dr blad i i must agree uh, considering how complicated this technology work i think the the least or i think the best that uh, we could do is go back to the basic being a responsible citizen i okay. think yun nang siguro ang 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 magawa ni Juan de la Cruz uh, having no technology having having the time that needs to be done for a more uh, closer look of this kind of research i think pinakauna talagang gagawin natin is go back to the basic be a good netizen be a good responsible social media user uh, verify facts when posted on on face on facebook or in twitter on any social media platform um wag makipag-away online <laughs> and at the same time uh, don't spread really uh, unverified facts kailangan nating tulungan ang isa't isa kasi Kasi nga, sabi ng speaker natin, it's so difficult na to really identify. And uh, yung, yung term is, every day is getting faker and faker and faker. You just imagine how to fight that if every day is getting faker. So, paano natin? So, siguro yung, yung mantra din natin is, every day we're, we're getting more or we're getting a more responsible uh, social media user something like that mm. so for the interest of time we thank uh, dr vlad and to all the to all the audience and the participants here last hear it ni dr ligason hashtag no to fake news i think yes we all agree regardless of colors that uh, we have until until the election day no to fake news and we will continue that advocacy, I think, Dr. Ligason. We'll continue that of uh, the hashtag no to fake news, even uh, after election, because for sure after election, this misinformation, disinformation, malinformation will not end. And I think it will getting more uh, and, and challenging issue after the election. Again, anchoring mm. on the statement of our speaker, napaka scary. I mean, because of this kind of technology. The technology now is really sophisticated, but hopefully uh, in every technology development and technology um, uh, innovations um, are done, it is always equated for the good purpose of the humankind or for a positive impact to the society. Dr. Vlad, we thank you. Uh, for uh, gracing and and I know you're very much busy, but uh, happy. There are so many questions um, um, related to you know related to the the social impact and some other thing. I invite everyone to please attend our last session. Our last session is. Uh, that will talk about the sociology. Ito natin maiintindihan, bakit talaga may mga taong kahit alam ng fake yun, bakit still they are spreading on it? Questions like those. Kasi our last session will be next Saturday and uh, we are inviting no less than a sociologist and a researcher, the University Research Director of Siliman University, Dr. Enrique Urashon. Uh, he will be talking about, uh, he will try to encapsulate our discussion from the from the three topics that we have from misinformation versus uh, disinformation, um, fact checking, and this uh, deep fake technology. I hope you will spread the news. Um, let's spread facts. And the fact is, this is our third day on the webinar on misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Thank you, Dr. Vlad, our appreciation uh, for sharing and for having with us this morning. And to those who missed our topics or our discussion for this morning, uh, we will be cleaning the video and we'll be uploading a material because we feel that this is very much important as part of instructional material 
for your empowerment technology classes or for your um, uh, media and information literacy. So once again, daghang salamat for attending this session. And our certificate of recognition will be sent uh, to our to our speaker, uh, Dr. Vladimir Mariano. Okay. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Uh, for your evaluation, Steve, our staff will be uh, putting on the chat room uh, an evaluation for you to be able to download your certificate. Uh, not just simply because you can download the certificate, but of course, but of course, um, uh, help us also uh, improve how we manage. And at the same time, in our future discussion, I would like also to pick up the suggestion from our speaker. Uh, from our speaker that maybe a webinar on technology and society because kami ni Vlad nasa technology kami and uh, magandang pag-usapan yung, yung impact, societal impact of this kind of technology kasi kami may intindihan namin bakit ginagawa itong technology na ito for basically for 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 good but there are other perspective and Sabi nga nila, evils are always evils. So, talagang gagawa ng gagawa ng paraan to make these things uh, bad. So, please, uh, uh, please uh, do the post-webinar survey. It's already on your chat box. And then we will be sending you your um, online or digital certificate. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, please continue or please attend our last session that's going to be on the next Saturday. And please like also our YouTube channel uh, of the uh, Seoul, the Seliman Online University Learning, because we posted all our recording. And we also, please like also our uh, Facebook fan page for you to be able to be, to receive notification of our activities, free training, webinars, hybrid in, in different modalities. Like for example, this afternoon, uh, we will be having a, a free training on Doodly uh, Basic. This is image related, uh, more on uh, editing and etc. But rest assured that uh, we will not teach you how to fake this kind of image. Okay, before we will end, uh, uh, as part of our as part of our uh, documentation also uh, for those uh, who can and would love to share their photos or their video please switch on your video for a photo documentation as of this time we are about we are 77 uh, on the participants room thank you once again and uh, Steve will be handling our photo opportunity. Please uh, switch them if you wish to switch on. You All right, switch yeah, on your video. Everyone, to please turn on your video camera if your connectivity allows you. Steve, and thank you everyone uh, for for joining again. I hope um, you have the same takeaway from today's uh, seminar. Let's be a good. Uh, responsible and a responsible netizen, especially on uh, consuming and contributing information uh, on the internet, specifically on social media. So once again, this is Dave Marshall. I hope to see you on the next webinar, especially uh, on Saturday. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Hi to Dr. Villanueva. Hi to all our B students.
hi to the students of uh, CTU, Cebu Technological uh, University. Thank you for joining. Thank you.